2020 McLaren GT that Dimmit McLaren was nice enough to let us borrow. We're going to compare this to my 2018 McLaren 720S and see the differences and some of the similarities and let's go get the 720S, okay? McLaren 720S compared to the McLaren GT. McLaren 720S a lot faster, 0 to 60 in about 2.5 seconds. McLaren GT 0 to 60 in about 3.1 seconds. If you're going for a long ride, this is not the car you want to be in. <laughs> uh, the McLaren GT from here to Georgia, you know, anywhere in Florida, you're fine. This car, you're going to be hurting. Not because it's a rough ride, because you can put this in comfort mode and it's very comfortable. It's the space you have inside, your feeding arrangement. There's not a lot of space for your feet. The chairs are rougher, harder, tighter. They really like squeeze you in. Not as much padding. They want to save some weight. The interior in this car is a super upgrade as compared to the 650S. This has all the modern technology in it, the 720S. The McLaren GT still has the older infotainment system. Leather is nice, but the quality isn't quite as nice as like a Ferrari or a um, Audi or even a Lamborghini. Um, it's, it's decent quality. It's better than say a Honda Accord, but it's not the quality of like another type of supercar like a Ferrari. Both are good cars. Long rides, McLaren GT, shorter rides, 720S. You want to go really fast, you want to take it on the racetrack, 720S. You want to go for coffee, you want to drive around town with your wife, your girlfriend, and you want to go out to dinner, and it's far further, McLaren GT. You want to drive to New York, McLaren GT. You want to drive around town for an hour, half hour, 720S. McLaren GT equipped decently, 240 to 250, 720S, 320 to 350 well equipped. So that's also, you gotta take into consideration how much you'd like to spend, what's your budget, and how much your wife will allow you to spend, or your girlfriend, or whoever tells you what to do. Everyone's got someone telling them what to do, I'm sure. Well, not everyone, but a lot of people. coming to like seeing outside the car the visibility from inside as you're driving big windshields both of them have big windshields nice side windows to look out and the whole back is kind of glassy you can see out these cars great the mclaren did a great job with visibility while you're driving changing lanes is easier the mirrors are perfect on both cars there's really no loss of vision or anything like that so they're both pretty safe to drive when it comes to the visibility one cup holder in the 720s there actually there's two cup holders there's one hidden but you only can fit a small a small can back there or something or a, you know a, uh, a small coffee the gt has two cup holders there's a lot more room for luggage and everything in the g key compared to this you really only have a little bit of space behind me here but more space than this than most other supercars they they kind of give you enough space to strap something down back here and then you got the front trunk with this decent amount of space. Uh, the GT has more, you can fit two sets of golf clubs in the GT, they say. I don't play golf, so I'm not gonna try to fit any golf clubs anyway. Both cars sound good. Uh, the 720S has a better exhaust note. 
just because it's tuned up more. They both have the exact same engine and transmission. Just the McLaren GT is a little detuned, less tuned than, than the 720S. <laughs> transmission. Transmission this car is a lot quicker shifts as compared to the GT. They're both great cars. So once again you want comfort and long rides, McLaren GT is a great car. Short rides or if you, you're young and you don't care about you know nothing hurts you, now 720 is a comfortable car to drive just for me not for long distances. So that's a personal personal preference I think so you should go drive them both and pick out which one you like better maybe get both of them you never know this is the McLaren GT that we're going to compare to my 720s that I showed you earlier it's a 2020 McLaren GT. It's a touring car, really comfortable seats, a lot of room for luggage, really smooth transmission. So let's take it for a ride and see what we think. Very smooth takeoff, changes gears without any kick. Um, really smooth, very comfortable seats. Engine sounds great, air conditioning works well. The touchscreen in the GT, I believe, is the older version compared to the 720S. Uh, but I'm not 100% sure on that. It's slow and it lags a little bit. We're going to take it up onto the streets here and see if we can get it to go. Uh, we're going to be doing about 25 to 60, starting now. faster than 60 but it was very smooth very smooth uh, no kick from the transmission the steering feels pretty decent not as tight as the 720s but still in control like I'm not worried about anything let's see what this car can do around a couple of turns so let's see what we got not bad handles nice brakes are pretty good Definitely peppy. Let's talk money. Show me the money! This car, the McLaren GT, is just over $235,000. Not bad if you want a high-end sports car, actually a supercar, that has a lot of comfort. It's not gonna be as quick or as nimble as the 720S, but it's plenty capable. It's a great car. You can't go wrong with it if you like comfort. If you like raw power and speed, then you want a 720S. And funny, I think there's a 720S behind us. I don't know, where you going, mister? Where you going? McLaren GT handles very well. The brakes are good. Has decent acceleration. It's different from the 720S, obviously but it still has a lot of acceleration for a, a GT car. The specs are zero to 60 in three seconds, which is supercar territory. So it's a great car. Stereo is not too bad, but all McLarens do not have good stereos. I don't understand why still to this day, but I've had a 650S, horrible stereo, amazing driving car though. 720S, better stereo, and the Bluetooth actually works. I gotta say, almost flawlessly, which in all the other McLarens never did. So that was the first time I've ever had um, really good Bluetooth. I don't know how the Bluetooth works in this one. I didn't hook my phone up to it, but I think this is the old system. I'm not sure, I gotta check. I'll let you know. I'd like to point out something about the doors as well. They both have the same style door that this door is way lighter. I'm not sure if the door is actually lighter or it's the, the mechanism 
that helps you open and close the door because this is way easier to close than the 720S. Hello. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video, my comparison between the 720S McLaren and the McLaren GT. I hope you liked it. I picked the 720S because I like, I like more power, raw power up front, and I don't drive my cars really more than, you know, a half hour, an hour a day, so that's why I picked the 720S. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you soon.